Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name's Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about how other developers are gonna slag off your code. All right, so yesterday I did a video called The Importance of Code Reviews where I talked about how Lately, I've been doing a lot of code reviews because we get projects in and I'll outsource them to other developers. Sometimes it's a senior developer, sometimes it's a junior developer, but it's important for me early on to check over the code and just make sure everything's up to a certain level, a standard. Ideally, we have a standards document, but if we don't, like if it's a newer technology like Flutter, we don't have one for, it's, it's even more important, just make sure that we're on the same page. Like, instead of doing it this way, can you do it this way? I like we, I like how you did this, I don't like how you did that. And the, the key is to not be ego driven, right? It's not like you're a bad developer because you did this, or this is terrible, or this is awful. It's more like, instead of doing it this way, can you do it this way because X, Y, and Z, because ultimately the project wins out over everything else. It's not about who's a good developer, who's a bad developer. But there was a really good comment on that video from Byron Lovelace who said, even though you have standards in your code quality, I guarantee that if your client takes your code to another developer, the first thing that developer will do is slag off your code and insist that it needs to be rewritten. Unfortunately, this is human nature, particularly if the new developers are out of their depth. I could not agree more. In fact, that's one thing I've seen throughout my career is people who establish credibility by bad-mouthing the last guy. Let's say you come in on a new project, the other person has left, you could let everybody know how smart you are by talking about how the last guy didn't know what he was doing. And if the last guy quit, nobody liked him, then you know they're gonna naturally go for you until you mess up and then the next guy comes in and bad-mouths you. But it's, like, it's a terrible thing about software. And it's not easy to have your code slagged off like that. Like the, 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 the truth is, Byron, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like you could be the best developer in the world. You could have like total 100% code coverage on unit tests. You could be using every design pattern there is. You could have comments throughout your code and somebody else could come in and like be far junior to you and just slap things together and they might see a singleton pattern and think, I don't even know why he did that. This guy, this guy didn't know what he was doing. This guy was a terrible developer. And to him, you probably are, even though we both know that's not the case. So I saw this early on. It seemed like every project I ever saw where one developer left, I mean, not, not necessarily the projects I worked on, but any project within like the IT department, one developer would leave, the next developer would come in and he would badmouth the previous guy. More often than not, like 80% of the time. And it got tiring. I got, you know, I hated to see it because it's hard when somebody criticizes your code. If they if it's constructive, that's great. I mean, I've, a lot of times I've sat with senior developers and they'll sit down and say, okay, instead of doing this, it's, okay, like in JavaScript, instead of doing console.log, um, the error is plus and then the, the, er the variable or the variable is plus whatever, use a comma because otherwise if it's undefined, it will break the string and it breaks the entire page. Little stuff like that. All right, and that's constructive, it's helpful. And they say, okay, the reason why we format it this way is because this, this is more readable, whatever. All of that's very helpful, but sometimes you do get in a situation where someone slags off your code. In a situation, if they take it to another developer, that's, I mean, it's, yeah, it might happen and it's not nice. Not nice to think the all the effort and the, the art you put into it is gonna be slagged off by somebody who could be not even out of their depth, as you said, but it's, it's if you've ever worked with someone who's actually slagged off your code when you're there, that's really bad. That's like a toxic environment. I, mean, I wanted to tell you this because I once worked in a place where I was, so we, I was working with other developers in a team and one developer, he was kind of, he was, he was what a software developer would call an asshole. He was just, he was just a jerk. He was like, his code was perfect. Everybody else was terrible. When I looked at his code, not necessarily, like he wasn't following any kind of standards. He was just, he considered himself to be a genius and he decided to quit. Actually, I think they kind of pushed him out. He kind of pushed him out or they, you know, he decided to quit or whatever. And um, and I had to take over his project. So we had like this, this notice period. So he had like a month of a notice period and I had to come in and take over what he was doing. So I had to jump into this project 
and he was sabotaging me throughout the rest of the company. He was bad mouthing me to every every business owner, everybody else's. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to leave here. But uh, this guy Eric, who's coming in, fortunately, he doesn't know what he's doing. His code is terrible. His code is crap, and it was it made my life awful. Right? It's just because it's you know he was ego driven, and he was I was so glad to see it. Like I will never talk bad about another developer because I know how difficult it is. I know how much work goes into it. Except this guy, right? This guy was terrible. And sometimes you do, right? I wanted to bring this up because it made me laugh, Byron. You're absolutely right. Take If somebody took your code and went to somebody else, unless you actually had documented standards and unless that developer knew what they were doing, then yeah, they might slag it off. I tend to think that a, a bad developer always thinks it needs to be rewritten. A good developer could look at, could even look at bad code and say, okay, yeah, this probably should be rewritten, but we need to get this done. We need to get this live. We just need to put this little, uh, a little tweaks here and there, and even put bad code live. I, in fact, I've had this quite a few times where people have come to me and said, uh, we, we have these other developers work on it. We've been to other development companies. They said it needs to be rewritten. How much would it cost to rewrite this code? And I look at it thinking, it, it probably should re be rewritten, but you need to go live. And I was like, don't spend this much money to rewrite the whole thing before you go live. Spend this much money. Let's just get it live, get some feedback from users, and, um, you know, and get it out there. So anyway, I'm kind of all over the place again today, but absolutely good point. Yeah, so many times a developer likes, likes his own code, but if it works on anybody else, it's easy to slag it off. My question to you guys, if you've ever worked in a team environment with other software developers, have you ever been in that toxic kind of environment where, where you have other developers who are just slagging you off? I mean, I had this guy slagging me off in comments on his code. You know, Eric will probably think it does this, whatever. I thought, God, it was awful. Anyway, <laughs> just some thoughts for today. That is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. <laughs>